Attorney Andrew, on the revolution question I'm about to start reading and would suggest others do the same, Friedrich Jameson's An American Utopia, which tries to conceptualize a post-capitalist society. Ryan from Ohio, Bill Maher has somehow managed to fillet Jordan Peterson more than he did YOLO Minneapolis. All right, let's watch some of this. Um, what do we have? Uh, okay. So here's the first one. Um, now, look, I get that Jordan Peterson's from Canada. But he seems to certainly have no problem opining and touring all through America. And his uh, prescriptions for our, the way to fix our gender problems uh, seem to know no international boundaries. Um, but here he is um, saying something that honestly, like, is almost childlike in its naivete, but it's really coming from a fully grown adult who is uh, supposedly an intellectual. It's just stupid. And it shows that this guy has an agenda. As much as people like, it's just, he, all he's doing is exploring the intellectualism. This is an agenda because no one can be this clueless about American politics to say the things he's about to say here. About it. I mean, there's all these people in the U.S. who are on the conservative side who are aligned with Trump for all sorts of reasons, and there's all this tension around his presidency and attempts to pull him out of his office for various reasons. And like, what what do you think will happen if that comes to pass? What what do you think will happen to these people that have identified with Trump? And, and like, how is it that Repo that that Democratic types, for example, are holding out their hand to say to these conservative types, sort of like, welcome back into the fold? Because it looks to me, from an, out, from an outsider's perspective, that your country is polarizing in a way that's not good, and that you know people are going after Trump. And I understand that. It's not like I don't understand that. But there's all these people that elected him and that are identified with him, and they're they're not taking this well, you know. And so, well, they're not. They're not. It's not. And you know, you might not think they're very bright and all, right, all of that. Pause it for a second. Okay, I, I just want to go go back here. Okay, so this idea that somehow the Democrats are supposed to hold out their hand to conservatives, a concept which never exists in politics uh, except for in this situation. And the idea that somehow we're uniquely polarized now. In 2000, George Bush won the presidency. The country was so polarized that it had to come down to a single vote on the Supreme Court. That's how polarized the country has been for over two decades. But now it's uniquely polarized. It wasn't uniquely polarized when Barack Obama was president and you literally had a party whose leader in the House was saying, it's not my job to not tell a dozen members of my caucus that they can't try and pass a law claiming that uh, the president was not born in America. That was not so unique, the polarization there. The polarization now is unique and Democrats have to put their hand out to conservatives and do what? That is a fundamental misunderstanding of the political reality on the ground in this country and how politi politics operate. Uh, if the uh, so-called whatever he's calling the democratic types or whatever that is, um, activate the same number of people or really just roll back some of the voter suppression uh, laws, frankly, uh, the Democrats are going to win. There is no necessity for them to reach out to conservatives. And not even like, and even that framework is absolutely wrong. The last group of people who you would reach out to who are Trump voters would be conservatives because ideologically there's no way to make that bridge. You might reach out to people who are unaligned ideologically and simply were, uh, you know, felt that whatever Clinton was a uh, corrupt or that she was a murderer or maybe you would reach out to people who um, were just felt like uh, they needed some type of change and there was no ideology. But the last group of people that the Democrats need to reach out to and frankly could reach are conservatives. You have to know absolutely nothing about politics in this country to make that statement. 
But then he's going to go on, and if you just dial it back a little bit, now what he's going to do, he's also showing his hand here. Because now he's projecting onto other people this sort of straw man that, like, well, you don't think it's important to reach out to them because you're they're dumb and this and that. And this is all part of the conservative aggrievement industry that this guy totally feeds off of. The aggrievement of white males who feel like their power in society is being threatened because the traditional hierarchies are being threatened. But let's continue to hear this. That, but there's all these people that elected him and that are identified with him, and they're, they're not taking this well, you know? And so, well, they're not. They're not. It's not, and, you know, you might not think they're very bright and all of that, and, and you know, they're backwards and, and, and all of those things. But, but, you, but you, you know... You need to have respect for the rest of your citizens. And if, you're, if your country isn't going to pull itself... These people he's talking about, these people, the backwards one, are the ones who literally had a problem with Barack Hussein Obama because he wasn't born in this country. You need to have respect for your other citizens. If, you're, if your country isn't going to pull itself apart, and I really see this happening from an outsider's perspective when I come down here. And I lived in the States well, for a while, and it wasn't like no. this before. Pause it. It wasn't like this before. Is that right? When did he live in the States? Was that some was that was that before the Civil Rights Act? Did he live here before the Civil Rights Act when black people weren't allowed to share a water fountain? Or was this when what was this during when Ronald Reagan said that uh, liberalism was a mental disease? When exactly did he live here? Yeah, back back in the day when race didn't matter. Right. Back. Yeah. Back in that day where we uh, we uh, we would look around on a set like this, and we would, we would not see race whatsoever. Oh, because there's all white people here. That's a Jordan Peterson. I'm just an outsider. I'm just making an observation that is uh, valid only because of my outsiderism. But it really is completely loaded. What, what he's doing is I'm making an attempt to make it seem like I don't have an agenda, but I clearly am pushing an agenda. All right, so that's the the first clip of Jordan Peterson on, and I here is another clip of him uh, basically going on about the same situation, and just in slightly different words, right? Here it is. People into tribal actors, and Wait, the go, end go back a little bit back. more. Go, go. This is the start of it. Okay. People into tribal actors and that the end result of that is catastrophe. But weren't you also saying, though, that, that the left is too worried about offending people? I think that that goes along with... I will. The, yes, Wait. yes. Well, that goes <laughs> with, but then on the other hand, when the left, for example, offends people in the political sphere, you're questioning whether that's somehow bad for society writ large. Well, I'm concerned about, I don't, I think that those two issues are, I think that those two issues are somewhat separate. I'm concerned about the, the dialogue in the United States. this is the international sign for separate. <laughs> co Co-joined is the international rule. For, I, I mean, I know that's a little bit petty, but this goes to show how muddled his thinking is. Because Alex Wagner just basically said, you're saying on one hand, the left is always so easily offended. But then you're saying you're offended by the left in the political sphere. Aren't you really just, isn't this just a way for you always to be aggrieved? Well, no, these are separate issues. It's kind of like when Milo said uh, no safe spaces right. before, uh, you know. Right, no safe spaces. And now I can't by... even go to a bar in Manhattan. Well, I'm concerned about, I don't, I think that those two issues are, I think that those two issues are somewhat separate. I'm concerned about the, the dialogue in the United States around the presidency pulling people, people farther and farther apart. It has nothing to do with the behavior of Trump. I think this is an independent issue. You can, you can say positive or negative but things about Trump as But he's only there because they support him. You see, I, I know. Mean, that's the thing. Is it's but not, that's the issue. That's the, that's the issue is they did support him. And without so, the circus, he's just a lonely clown. <laughs> yeah, but he has these this people in Congress who are enablers and this base that it is a cult of personality, not unlike dictatorships we've seen in the past. I mean, he said once famously, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose any fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes. And, he, and he has proved that to be almost true. I mean, we cannot imagine what he would do where they were turning him, because I don't know what that would be. I don't think it's anything, because whatever it was, he would just say, well, it's fake news. But, but okay, and so imagine he's impeached, just for the sake of argument. Impeach or convicted. Okay, either of those. But it seems to well, me... Well, that, that matters. One, he has to leave. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not an unimportant detail, but it still seems Pause to it. me that... that, that is that is Jordan Peterson saying, I don't know the difference of what you're talking about, but that's okay. He, that's not his, uh, you know, uh, American civics is not his, uh, his wheelhouse, but go ahead. But it still seems to me that it leaves you with the problem of what do you do with the disaffected 40% yes. that are going to be very unhappy right. about this, independent of Trump's behavior. Kind of like the Sunnis after we kicked over Saddam. Well, that's that's a hell they of a precedent to cite. Yes, mm, right, that's right. What... Wait, wasn't he going into uh, where's the thing where he talks about? Uh, he talks about uh, identity politics. Oh, you gotta, we gotta play the ones that you show me, because I don't. That's. He went on to talk about identity politics, and, and all right, whatever. Let's just move on. Sick of hearing that voice. Anyway. Well, no, the thing is, though, is that the whole identity politics thing. And let's see if we can find that clip. Didn't we play identity politics? Because the identity politics shtick is such bullshit. Uh, and particularly for a guy like, I mean, first off, the 40 percent, we don't need to the this. The, the way our system works is that there's always 40 percent who loses. It's just that for the past several decades, it's been 51 percent have actually lost. I mean, we've seen it in the context of Congress, where you've had over 50 percent of uh, people voting for Democrats and Republicans control the House. Where in the last two elections that a Republican president has come into office for the first time, over 50 percent of the people voted against the Republican and he becomes president. Why wouldn't you, if you are Jordan Peterson and you are very worried about this dynamic, why wouldn't you worry about the dynamic of what about the 52 percent or 53 percent who voted against Trump and he's president? Wouldn't that be more of a concern than the 40 percent? A group does not suffer. I mean, that's the thing is that this is there's this is there's no rhyme or reason to what he's saying. And the only thing that gives a rudder for his opining about politics, for that matter, is that he knows who his audience is. And it is disaffected conservatives and young people who just have a sense, young white people young white males who have a sense that they don't get what their grandparents had or what maybe their older dad had, which was women as chattel, <laughs> a uh, guaranteed limited pool of competition uh, for anything that they're going for, where large swaths of the population are simply not allowed to participate in the same way, either explicitly or implicitly. And as this changes, people get upset. And here is this. Here is Jordan Peterson, who is he is upset about all of this identity politics. We need to talk to them with more generosity than we do. I'm, you're, you're, I'm confused about how this dovetails with your thesis that the left is too preoccupied with being non-confrontational. Right? Is the it, left is too well, preoccupied just that with we being are, That's interesting. Okay, yeah, that's, no, all right. No, that's I'm a good question. The idea that, that liberals especially, <clears throat> intellectuals, are, are preoccupied with politically correct speech, that they're oh, oh, not... Oh, I see, I see. What and, and yet... No, they're pre too preoccupied with, with identity politics by a large margin. And they tend to categorize everyone by their ethnicity and their sex and their gender and I think all that does is turn people into tribal actors and that the end result of that is catastrophe. But weren't you also You know this is like the classic thing of like you know uh, uh, a couple where it's like you 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 shouldn't score keep. You shouldn't score keep in your relations with people. 
You shouldn't score keep, okay? That's what's really going on here. Score keeping, it's not healthy to developing a relationship. This is, or it's like, it's akin to like uh, when, um, when people uh, start saying like, hey, how come the rich are getting massive tax cuts and we're getting sc screwed in terms of services? Oh, that's class war. You know, when someone says like you're scorekeeping or you're paying too much uh, attention to like identity um, or you're, you're starting a class war, that's an indication that that person is winning that battle, that they don't want you to pay attention to what's going on. Because the people who are paying attention to things like gender or like race are people who have been systemically and since the founding of this country and prior to that time in certain circumstances have been losing at the hands of the guy who says, don't you're you're paying too much attention to that. Because when people didn't pay attention to that, when people did not have the voice to say, hey, wait a second, black people should have the right to vote. Hey, wait a second. Government shouldn't redline and say we're only going to uh, provide subsidies for housing if you have a covenant where you know black people are allowed. Or uh, where women said, like, you know, I shouldn't be property of my husband or I should be able to get a credit card in my own name, too. Or I should have the right to vote. Or why is it that in the workplace, you know, we're paid uh, less money? Like, that's when you're starting to bring up all of these differences, and that's the problem with things. Of course, I mean, this is so basic as to be a joke. There is one, one political party in this country that is based on identity politics, where 95 to 90, maybe not over 90 percent of its uh, supporters are of a single race, and that is the Republican Party. Kind of reminds me of that reductress headline. Uh, I'm not political, parentheses, because I assume I will retain all of my privileges forever. Exactly. I don't have to agitate. I'm. In fact, we should end politics right now. I mean, if I if, if you are a, uh, you know, a billionaire and, uh, you know, you should just basically say, like, there should be no more politics. We're fine. Everybody's fine. Like, let's freeze everything now. And that's basically what Jordan Peterson comes out of. All of these people, they come out of this one basic truth that there are people in society who have never had to have their status in any way threatened or questioned. And now they are feeling threatened or questioned. And, and in many instances are losing some measure of power. And of course their response has got to be, stop worrying about those things. Stop, stop scorekeeping. Stop scorekeeping because they don't want you to find out that you're losing. That's why they don't want the score. They just went at the end of the game. Like, it's, it's fine. Too much identity politics. Yeah, that's the problem when these self-help people try to get political. Because, like, the advice in a vacuum is fine, you know? Like, stand up straight, clean your room or whatever. But then um, when you say that that's the only thing people should be focusing on, that's when you run into problems. Well... It's not been problematic for him. Don't score keep. But if you were, you would find out that his bank account and his, uh, he's dressing very sharp these days, isn't he? <laughs> he is looking yeah. a lot better, actually. Yeah. yeah his beard's looking very uh, yeah. well moisturized. I was just, I was thinking today, too, in, 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 of his whole, like, the lipstick, the lipstick line. You know, that uh, segment was yep. like, uh, yeah. It's just how sort of absolutely absurd his argument is even on its face. I mean, if you put aside the idea that like how much in society, both male and female is ostensibly according, would be according to him to um, attract a mate, right? Well, we do a lot of things to look of more attractive. Of course, of course. But it doesn't then follow that 
you know, men and women can't work together. Well, according to him, it would be the the slightest of temptation. Uh, the the idea of like, I mean, his argument is fundamentally like that of a uh, fundamentalist religious type. I mean, there's a reason why Orthodox Jews, uh, women are, you know, uh, you need to ha- wear a wig and you need to have your uh, skirt below your knees and you need to have your, sh- your blouse b- uh, below your, your elbows uh, because any signs of the flesh are too tempting for the male. And the same <laughs> with uh, in, in Islam. The- I actually had an unpleasant interaction once in the grocery store when I lived in a Hasidic neighborhood. Uh, she, the lady told me there's lots of men around. You need to put more clothes on. Exactly. Because, because men, because we have not evolved to the point where men can help themselves, but for their uh, primary directive, which is to go and uh, bang the woman on the head with a big stick and drag her back to the cave. I mean, that's what his argument is. Um, and... To, to argue that this is, this is all too early for, for our development to have men and women working together. That's basically the argument. So we have not evolved there yet. Also, I mean, just... Which is, again, also super convenient if men are the ones at the workplace already. Like, we just haven't evolved to the point where we're going to give women the opportunity to have economic power as we, well. We I'm haven't sorry. evolved to the point where we can include you in our club yet. Exactly. I'm sorry. Sorry. Mm, maybe next century. Yes. I mean, I, I think the... You're the, so close. Like, in, in the grand scheme of human evolution, you're so close. But for you personally, it may not happen. There's a lot of people who still think he's right about that whole lipstick and sexual attractiveness thing. So just for those people, you know, there's a lot of sociological reasons behind fashion, too, and class reasons. Like, there's but, all sorts of okay. things that fashion well, signifies. Also, does he think men don't do things well, to make themselves it, more attractive? Of course. Even if you were to stipulate that the only reason why women put on lipstick is to remind the man of what they would look like during sex as some way of like attracting them and uh, prohibiting them from doing their work at where why is that man wearing that thousand ten thousand dollar watch or why does he have a fast car because this is all to project the archetype of being able to provide for this woman right i mean and so all all of these things, like, is that too tempting? Are women able to sort of, like, keep themselves from fawning all over that guy with the Lamborghini? Why is he wearing them jeans? Why is he wearing those jeans? What is he, he's projecting that he can be, he's, uh, he can work, he can go out and raise food for the family, and he could be a good provider. I, I mean, was thinking about his butt absurd. and the jeans. absurd. It's just absurd. Women are not allowed to have that, uh, those feelings, Jamie. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we haven't evolved to the point where we can afford mm, to have that. Forgot. It's it is it is so sad and pathetic, uh, but you know, look, McDonald's is also a very big restaurant. My understanding is not the, necessarily the best food. This stuff is not even true by his own Evo Psych bullshit rubric. Like um, alphas and betas, the place we get that language from, um, was later found out. That's like that's not even true of wolves. That this whole idea was based upon like the person who did this study of wolves later retracted it true of me though (laughs) it's stunning it it really is stunning but it just goes to show you you know you the if you play towards the most aggrieved um the most the combination of of people who still retain the most wealth and power in our society as measured in terms of dollars and access to uh, the media narrative. And then you cross-reference that with their own ability to feel self-aggrieved. That is the sweet spot. That's where you make your cash. Uh, And it's also nice to have, like, uh, you know, backing from uh, someone like the Koch brothers. I'm not saying that Peterson does, but uh, certainly guys like uh, Dave Rubin, who's going to be opening for him, does. So...